Hello and welcome to FGC Philosophy. My name is Tavian the Philosopher Napier and this is where we level up inside and outside the virtual arena. What that means is we try to better ourselves through conversation, through thinking, sometimes it's mainly gaming related, sometimes it's personal development related or philosophical. Today's topic is going to be more on the casual side. We're talking about Project L. It's time to revisit this. Uh, my friend and I, Mega Megamechstar, had a conversation about this game a little bit ago. Uh, things got hectic, so I didn't get a chance to edit it until just now. And I actually had an editor uh, edit this episode, which is really cool. I might do that a little bit more, have an editor start working on my content so that I can uh, not sit down and have to free up a lot of my time to edit. It takes a long time to edit, but nonetheless, uh, I'm looking forward to that episode. A little bit of a check-in in case you missed last week's episode. Uh, I am doing a lot better in life right now. <laughs> I'm not going to brag about it and talk too much about it, but basically uh, I got my salary position back at the university that I work at, and it's a big deal for me and my family. That means that I, I have a lot more resources to do a lot more things. Uh, I'm not as stressed out. I'm not as concerned about where my next paycheck is going to be coming from and trying to hustle my brand. Uh, I can work on my content again and then my salary position can be my income while I work on my passive income uh, once again. I have bigger plans, I gotta get it all organized and such, but for right now, uh, my main goal is to get my content coming out more consistently, right? That is this podcast, and then eventually some video content. I have been doing some gaming stuff, I've just been doing it for my son primarily, he loves dinosaurs, I've been doing uh, some ARC Let's Plays and, and some other stuff, mainly unlisted. Just because I want him to see it, I watch it with him. Uh, it's kind of weird watching my own content, but that's whatever. That's what it is. Uh, and he loves it and he wants more of that. So that's something I'm going to keep on doing. It's a little bit morbid, a little bit dark if you think about it. But I like the idea of me having content in case anything ever happens to me. Uh, my son still has access to to me in a way. And that's, that's weird and a little dark, but I, I love that idea. Uh, content is a really big deal for me. And as such, uh, I'm going to utilize that. But nonetheless, uh, to get back on topic... This episode starts with a conversation with me and Mega Maxstar talking about DNF Duel. Let's hop into it. Yeah, so I think this free to play like portion is going to be super duper good for everything, everybody involved, right? Like we can use multiverses as a pinpoint as to like how successful this is. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna look up the Steam charts for this like right right now. Like exactly how many people are playing and um oh can you link that here. to me yeah holy crap so i'm gonna use two separate numbers and it's gonna be roughly the same because they have um they do have a technical test server that people use so where's my discord oh right my discord is open on here so as of right now the technical test server has three thousand people playing so we can just say that's like an extra 3000 or something along the lines of that. But 24 hours, last 24 hours on, and we can date this August 12th, 51,000 players, 51,000. Okay. Like that's mm. okay. Let's now on which console on this is just steam, just steam. Right mm. now. Let me, let me do something really quick here. I'm looking up the steam charts for DNF duel a game that literally came out like a month ago by now mm -hmm. um 40 dollars or yeah right 40 dollars the last 24 hours 290 people damn 290 people within the last 24 hours all time that peak, explains why i kept fighting all, the same person all time peak twelve thousand. all time peak for multiverses is one hundred and fifty three thousand. okay multiverses is getting way more fucking players than like dnf duel ever did and dnf duel was made by a triple a developer like arxis for fighting games yeah. right like and dnf dnfo is huge in japan and keep in mind dfo duel or dfo is free is a free mmorpg so like they decided to sell a game that is branded on being free to play who has a free to play audience and decided to slap a $40 price tag on it. And now we have 290 people playing it just on steam. Like we could say PS4 might have more players, but like just 290 people, like it's nowhere near multiverses in terms of like the people playing. And you can, you can argue about how multiverses plays 
like the actual gameplay versus the NF duel. Like, oh, well, it's a platform fighter. Obviously, it's going to get more people. But you can still say just from here alone that this game being $40 is keeping people away from playing it. Like, it, it really just is. Like, why would I pay $40 yeah. for a game as of right now that's potentially getting a season one pass that's like adding more stuff maybe later but like all i get is arcade mode and versus and training that's it for 40 bucks like i might i might buy this game and i might not even like it but i already played three hours of it so steam won't refund it 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 truly is and say jam and maximilian maximilian has made this like really good video like talking about this shit and uh, i th i think there was like a huge like content creator collaboration like on accident where just a bunch of people joined a discord call like a lot of the big fgc heads and they were just talking about stuff like this where like looking at it like the old world of pay 40 to 60 dollars for fighting games kills the scene immediately because like what you could get out of this fighting game might be nothing yeah might be literally yeah. nothing and like you can't return the game you can take it back to gamestop and they'll say i'll, I'll take ten dollars for that and you're like bro yeah i just paid sixty dollars for this are you kidding me and when we also take into account riot's record current record right now for free-to-play games okay we're going to talk about legend of runeterra and valorant both incredibly successful games despite like uh what might some people might say of how you like the games or how the games play they both have a respectable amount of people playing it and a good community behind it you you take a look of anywhere that anybody's talking about as of right now so many streamers are playing valorant just like I, it's crazy because um my partner cassie she has been watching a lot of offline tv player or like twitch streamers and all they play is Valorant. Like, literally, that's all they play. And hmm. she's like, I don't even like Valorant. I hate Valorant. <laughs> I'm like, dang, that's crazy. Like, if you would look at the watch history, it would look like you just play, like, you just like Valorant. But it's not the case. <laughs> like, they're just playing it because it's free to play and everyone's playing it. Mm -hmm. And Legends of Runeterra is, like, literally one of the best card games on the market right now. Like, I would say it is the best card game. I ditched Hearthstone. I don't even play Hearthstone anymore. And I've put in, like seven eight hundred dollars into that game and i bro i don't care about that i haven't touched it in years and i never finished my collection in hearthstone runeterra i finished my collection of cards within a year of playing like less than a year and like they've been releasing expansions and every time they release the expansions i would have extra dust to just make everything i would have all of the resources built up to get literally any deck i wanted and i literally have only put money in for skins just skins that's it hmm. and i have every card of the game like right now yeah so their monetization system their monetization well. system is really well like it's awesome it's really hmm. good and you can see like people play free to play it's like there's no question about it you can make a game playable free to play you just need to do other stuff like grand blue could have been a really awesome game if it was free to play because like they have customization mm -hmm. options for their characters you can change characters weapons for christ's sake no oh, like shit. like yeah you could add weapon skins are you kidding me you can add like color variations armor like anything for characters like you can talk about street fighter as much as you like and how much you don't like sf5 but you can't deny that people are playing that shit because they can play like a santa version of their character <laughs> like <laughs> like skin sell that shit sells bro yeah like yeah you can't deny that and i think that's the huge the biggest part of this and why it's going to blow up the fgc there's no doubt about it in my mind like i'm not call me call me crazy but i think this game's gonna come out and it's literally gonna be like the next big thing for the fgc for sure and oh, yeah. there's no doubt in my mind, like we we have so much context clues from the past of other developers making games free to play. Shit, you can even look at Fantasy Strike. 
like fantasy strike had a huge spike in player base during covid because it was a free-to-play game and yeah. every single free-to-play fighting game that's out right now has some sort of player base on it no matter what if fantasy strike might not have as much players but i'm telling you it's still got a player base i know that for a fact so yeah and the, like that no that game's not really made to be a uh, quote unquote esport like a competitive game no you know it's really like a uh, like a dev test kind of thing like hey look how simple you can make your fighting game and still have it be competitive viable, like, and viable yeah. yeah it's the same thing as um footsies like you can look at it like footsies oh, yeah know? it's just a test of how much you can still be better at somebody putting it down to just the like nitty-gritty basics yeah, of just the, the game and it's a good game it's fun you genuinely enjoy it and you can if you have a bunch of friends around you can just play it and be competitive with it <laughs> Just with your own circle of friends. Like, that's possible. It's just, it's going to work. It's going to work and it's going to be awesome. And I'm really excited for this because, like, I'm just hoping they'll announce something soon. They said, they said you'll hear from us and this um, year. Yeah, this year. So we don't got very much left in the year. So, like, I'm guessing the next thing they're showing is going to be a title reveal and, yeah. like, the roster. And, early access i think that is like the next thing that they're going to do is talk about that um and when i mean early access i'm talking about some sort of closed beta test that you have to be invited to that they're going to do over a small period of time that's just kind of been the norm lately for like a lot of fighting games multiverses kind of did that with twitch drops which actually like the coolest thing that they could probably do they would be absolute geniuses is if they enabled twitch drops during lcs events like hey if you watch lcs you could get a like invitation for project l not only not only will that increase the numbers massively for (laughs) like riots already huge competitive season but like people would jump on that like no problem even like yeah a lot of people just like turn on the stream and just like turn their volume down but like that's still a view to them and that's still ads that gets viewed in some way shape or form like that's a lot of like money for them to do that so Mm -hmm. i wouldn't put it behind them and i like to do that re like soon really soon it just makes sense it makes sense i'm wondering so I'm looking at the calendar here for LCS. Yeah. But there's no Worlds this year, right? Or like this. That's already uh, done. Right? Yeah, Worlds is done. We're at the first part of the split. Um, okay. Like, Last game is on the, on the 14th. So that's this Sunday. So I, I. Yes. I think Sunday might be too soon after Evo to make that announcement. But I don't see finals anywhere. So like these guys all just qualify to go to Worlds? Um, is that what this is? I think it's if you get first or second, at least it's been a minute since I've watched LCS, but from what has been previously, either they get a a vast amount of points that goes to it. I think if you win this split, you guarantee make worlds. But I think if you get like second or third, you might get like a bunch of points to help push your team to go to worlds. But you so have this to- is like the American like grand finals pretty much, right? Yes, the, it's like the finale of the split. Yeah, a lot of people are watching it right now. Like LCS is kind of popping off right now. So yeah, so my my guess would be like, what? How crazy would it be if they show a fighting game on the like? Fin- I mean, why on the last? But here's that would be nuts. Yeah, like, like if they show it during a tournament for for League of Legends or, or something or Valorant or something like that, because you you're you're showing your Riot fan base a Riot game, right? Right. I think I think they would do it during LCS. If they did do it, dude, on my birthday, doing an announcement like that, that would be fucking sick. But, uh, I mean, it seems a little early. Right. That's how I feel about it. Um, I saw August 30th, though, but so I don't know if like that's when the finals is going to be, because usually I, it's like a best of three or something. I doubt they'll do it over Valorant, because Valorant's not League of Legends. 
Yep. So it's Riot, but it's not League of Legends. Um, I agree. So I doubt that they would do it then because that would just be a very dumb move. So <laughs> I'm trying to think of when the next split starts, but for LCS, because I think mm. it's um, do they go into the fall split? Um, fall splits. I'll see. So yeah, I see this. Like all I saw was uh the 14th. I don't know if you are better at looking this stuff up, but no, I, I see what I you're looking find. at. You're you're looking at the right stuff. Like it's okay. You're you're there. Um, see, I don't know when else they would really do it though. Um, if just like a random like announcement. Okay, that would be yeah. It's just less... spring and summer splits. Okay, that's what I thought. Um. Hmm. Yeah. So. I mean, if they did do it, I mean, it's possible because a lot of people were thinking they were going to say something at Evo. Like, yeah, I thought about that. And it's like, why? I, I don't know why they would show a Riot game at a non Riot event, though. Like, I mean, right. it's technically see, sort of owned by Riot. See, that's, that's the key. You're on the right process. So maybe they'll, they would much rather do it at this point. It's right. very much possible, but I don't know how probable. Um, well, the question I had was, like, if they were going to show up between the two events, which one would get them more viewers? LCS, for <laughs> sure. Like, yeah. e Evo would kill it. Like, Evo does have a, a player base, but Riot's streams just get more. Just by by far. More people I think watch the conversion LCS. rate percentage would be higher for, like, an FGC event. Right. But, like, the total number of people that you can reach, I think even though it's going to be a lower percentage, you'd probably still get a higher number of people that would play that game. Like, fighting you know? game people will enjoy it, but it, it is a League of Legends game. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have to really consider, like, well, if they want to tailor to the audience that it's truly for, which is, you know, mostly for League of Legends players, but also people who enjoy fighting games... The League of Legends crowd would probably love this way more, like than just Evo. Because if you're just like, yeah. man, I'm just here for MK, and you're like, I don't give a shit about League, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just here to play MK and Injustice, and that's it. And like, <laughs> also, like, which one would get a better crowd reaction too? Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely curious about that one. I think it'll be the League of Legends crowd, but like, yeah, I, I, I no think, clue. I think the League. Well, if it was at an like. Especially an official event too, with a lot of people at it, one hundred percent. Because yeah, if anybody is a League of Legends fan, you know that you care about like literally everything regarding mm -hmm. it. Like even if you weren't a big fan, you're not a big fan of card games. You're still like, oh fuck yeah, like this is sick that they're making a card game for this shit. Like that's cool. Especially if you're you know any small form of a like mtg any sort of tcg fan you're like bro or even a hearthstone fan like you're like dude this is it They're like this is so fucking sick i'm fucking pumped i'm so excited or a fan like you know it a teppin is that what you said <laughs> yeah dude dude, uh, dude i'm still subscribed to the teppin subreddit i still like see shit from them that game actually, i installed it recently but couldn't get it to play for some reason i don't know I, why oh that's odd that game's couldn't actually like low-key really good like it's a really good mobile card game yeah i think the player like, base is just low or something i don't know the player base is low but i think it's a really well-made game like genuinely like i'm i'm happy mm. for the people that like that stuff because yeah I think, it's, I think it's a genuinely good game and if you really like They've a been lot updating of those it too yeah if you like a lot of those capcom like IPs. franchises yeah ips mm -hmm. like monster hunter resident evil Mega you Man, know like Street fighter right exactly like if you care Dark about Stalkers. that stuff yeah like holy shit this is really fucking cool like I, i'm gonna play this shit you know it's stuff like that where you you can tell like if they revealed teppan i'm sure they revealed teppan in some sort of um i don't remember where they did but i'm sure they did it i think it was a, i think it was like, a combo breaker i think teppan teppan i think Really? That's actually surprising. I'm not sure. I mean, it might have been not. It might not have been the first time they showed it. Like they didn't debu maybe debut it, but yeah. I would have thought uh, they would have done it at a Capcom event of some sort. But still, I have to check. I don't still, know. Quote me on that. People people care about the IPs regarding the company, you know. Mm -hmm. So like, if you're a big fan of League, you're a big fan of Riot, like by design, because 
that's just how it is. But I mean, I'm not saying for everybody. But there's a good chunk of people, especially people who are playing an early league. Well, also so, keep in mind it's going to be free to play. Yeah, exactly. You know, so why not try it? It has League of Legends on it and Riot Games. And so like, why not just check it out? Yo, it's got my favorite champ. Like, yo, this has a Lowy in it now. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Like, I'm going to play a um, They better put Vi in there, man. They put a Vi in there day one where I'm Dude, rioting. They need to They need to put Vi and Set. 100%. Those characters oh, are yeah. literally. And it's a tag fighter, too? <sighs> oh. Dude, hell yeah. Also, I still hope. I know we talked about this like way back last podcast where it's a potential like actual like 2v2 where there's another person that you're playing with. If it is that, this shit is going to blow up, bro. This shit's going to blow up. There's no doubt in my mind. Like I, I already know so many people in my life that's going to immediately be like, yo let's let's queue up right now bro i'm ready to fuck it up like i already play yeah. multiverses with a lot of my friends right now and that shit's the so fucking that fun right that shit's so fun to play tag teams and do cool ass combos like right next to your well, friend well, let me ask you this how many people do you know that like or are interested in fighting games but like when you talk about dragon ball they're like there's too many characters i don't want to play a tag fighter yeah no everybody like almost everybody because yeah like Every time I've ever, like, been sitting down playing Dragon Ball, uh, if there's, like, s- like, I'm going to use Doki Khan as an example. When I was there, so many people would walk by and be like, yeah, I love Dragon Ball and this stuff, but, like, there's way too much going on. Like, I, I couldn't, I can't figure the game out. Like, I don't know how to play it or there's too much going on for me to understand. Mm-hmm. That's common. That's really, really, like, common for a game. And people could say the same thing about Marvel. It's like, bro, I love superheroes and shit like that, but holy fuck. Look, yeah there's way too much shit going on right now bro and so, i i, I want to say I, we believe this was possible before multiverses even came out right which, like the, the standard the tournament standard is 2v2s right as of evo right and that's and that's the crazy part is like tag team stuff is really it right now and again like multiverses has an option 1v1s 2v2s like you can really have it where you can do like your own like you could just control both characters but there's could definitely be a possibility where you play with both characters. I mean, shit, Dragon Ball does have that as a mode. Like, you control oh, yeah, your own you character in a 3v3, right? Like, We need to try that so I can see what that's like. Dude, that's, we yeah. got to try that with rollback. Like, once it's here. <gasps> oh, yeah. I forgot about that. It plays like, or as of right now, it plays like shit. Like, absolute dog shit. And nobody plays it because if you, have even, if you have even one person, I don't know. It wasn't announced. Uh, okay. All if right. you have one person that's on McDonald's Wi-Fi, it ruins it for the rest of the people. So imagine now you get to play your favorite fighting game character or favorite Dragon Ball character in like a team versus another team of like three other dudes. Like that's that's kind of cool, man. Like I'm surprised yeah. more hasn't shown up. But honestly, you can only so, do it online. Like if they made yeah. it where you could locally do it, like that would be huge, you know? So yeah, oh, man. so but like I, it's stuff like that, you know. Yeah, so you probably know I'm, I was or am a big fan of DOA that are alive. Yes, and yes, DOA. Uh, I don't remember if it was DOA four. I think it was DOA four or DOA two Ultimate on regular Xbox. Uh, but they had a two v two mode, and it was like a tag fighter almost, where you can just tag in your characters. Uh, it was really fun, but they had it to where you could actually have a two v two in that game. Online. That's actually cool. I didn't know you could do that. That's really fucking yeah, cool. Yeah, I don't remember which one I, I played that had it. I think almost every version of the game has had a tag mode in it. Uh, it's not super popular, but I've always loved that, like being able to tag in a friend and play with them. Yeah. It's, it, it was the coolest always thing. Cool, bro. Yeah, so in, in my head, I already know it's a thing. I already know what it feels like to play a game like that. DBZ is apparently like that to some degree. Um, we could talk about MK9, bro. MK9, you were allowed to locally oh. play 2v2 with online with like your little brother with another controller (laughs) like you could be on the same tv and play 2v2 with other people online who could potentially be playing like one other person online and like that other person like at their own home or you could this isn't a new concept at all this was mk9 bro at like xbox 360 yeah like so it it was possible like that was a thing and also, I I don't know if MK had rollback. Actually, I don't. 
I don't, don't think know. it did. I don't think MK9 did, but I'm, I don't know. And it's cool. Like it, it is really fucking cool. And yeah, it might only hit a small, potentially only a small like set of people. But like it's one of those things where there could be people who only like playing the tag team mode, and that's their mode. Like how many people do you know that play only a Rams? You know. Like you would think that's not possible, but it is like there are people out there right now. That's like, yeah, I only yeah. play League for the Arams, to be honest. Like, I just like I used that. to play Dominion. Right. Yeah, I thing. played Dominion, too, bro. Like, I, I love Dominion. I played threes, bro. I played threes. Yeah. Threes Twisted were tree fun. Line. Twisted tree line, man. Bring that shit back. So mm -hmm. people like different types of ways to play and people like variations because it makes the game that they love more interesting in different degrees so yeah you can definitely look at it like holy shit this is definitely possible like you could do this yeah we're looking at yeah we're looking at mk combos right now and like this is yeah. cool like you, this people didn't play mk like this but you could and there yeah, were people and, uh, playing it like this so let's try to think about or visualize the concept of a tag fighter like a, a db it's, it's like a marvel tag fighter almost like what we're watching right now with mk9 yeah where you can you can tag out in the middle of a combo and continue your combo so right. think about that like i know what that feels like from doa but like think about that for a second because like you have to coordinate with somebody else you right know what i mean like you you tag them in they got to continue the combo bro or yeah. they got to continue the pressure in. like you got to communicate you got to be there but like, yep. it makes it all the more satisfying when it does work. That's what I'm saying. It's just like, like it makes it so fucking fun when you're just like vibing with your friend. You're just chilling and y'all just like are playing fighting games and just <laughs> yeah. absolutely doing work against people. Like I've already been doing that with multiverses. Like yeah. I've been like um, my friend right now, Jared, uh, shout out to you, bro. He's been playing this shit like non-stop literally top 500 lebrons online right now <laughs> and crazy. he's he's crazy and every time we play 2v2 it feels like we're on top of the world man like it feels so fucking fun i already have so many clips of like shit going on where it's like holy fuck like i'm having so much fun right now and very nice like this this is obviously like it's possible and it, honestly i would say it, it would be a really bad move if they didn't do this because i feel like yeah. it'd be a huge missed opportunity yeah I, I, like thinking about it so thinking about it from a product a production point of view because like for those who don't know i i host tournaments at an esports arena and so part of my job is running production and running a smash tournament for production like i love the way it looks i love the setup like it's one of my like bronco beatdown is probably my, my favorite production setup but in terms of like player reactions you know, after a win or a loss, like seeing a team pop off versus seeing a, like an individual pop off, it's not quite the same. Like That's true. It, it's, I'm not saying one's better than the other, but I think one has a bigger emotional impact. Like because there's more people on the screen, there's more like emotions going on. Like for for the player, I think being able to celebrate with somebody else kind of also feels good, and then not feeling like you have to do everything on your own. That's like, for example, Rocket League for, uh, is like one on one, one v ones is the least played of all the three modes because people hate getting exposed. So they like playing on teams instead. Right. You know, I think we, so I think this is a great opportunity. I think we, um, l last podcast, we talked about project L. I, I think I said something like this too, but I'll repeat it again. Like I, I, there was something that I watched that pretty much said like, uh, you know what? I bet it was, um, I bet money. It was like a Corey gaming video or something like that. Mm. But the like differences between like playing a team sport versus like by yourself and there was a player or someone that said like why and it was pretty much like celebrating a win with the person like your teammate the person sitting right next to you is way more satisfying and like way more exciting than celebrating a win that you just got yourself like a little less awkward too yeah it is awkward because <laughs> like if we if we want to like really take a look at it right like we're gonna look at like the person who won evo for guilty gear right like the person who won guilty gear right now or even um dragon ball because i know dragon ball wawa won and all he did was just like stand up raise his hands and he's like yeah i did it like woo. 
and you could just tell like this man was tired and he was just like ready to go home and i'm sure he was happy i'm sure he was like he felt like he was on top of the world right but like mm -hmm. if you take a look at any lcs wins any sort of like fighting game team wins you see these people pop off and they're really enjoying themselves they're like on top of the world like teammate stuff is huge not to say like 1v1 stuff isn't but team stuff brings people together and it makes a community larger just by itself 100 percent. and league of legends <laughs> is known for being a team game right like yeah, even runeterra absolutely. legends of runeterra had a labs mode where you could play 2v2 with another team and that was my favorite labs mode and they never brought it back <laughs> riot if you're listening to this please put it back and make it a game mode god please i'm begging you which it, mode for runeterra it, it's like twin headed oh. dragon kind of a oh okay like you you're yeah. like you both are on the same board but like you're switching turns on who's the pl who's playing and or actually no i'm sorry you don't share the same board you're playing two separate games with other people and like you you try to do a best of three format it was so fun to me and it felt really fun when and there were points where you could interact with your ally with small buffs like give your opponents like minions plus one health i mean give your give your allies minions plus one health or give them a card that does this um and that card mm. does like a very sub minimal effect that really doesn't it helps but it doesn't like win or lose you the game kind of scenario where it's just small enough to make it feel like you're not being cheated like summon <laughs> an 01 minion on the board and you're like sick bro that's an extra blocker for me like i don't have to die this turn or i could take less damage this turn but like those were the points where i was enjoying L runeterra the most and that was because i was celebrating those victories and those experiences with somebody that i knew and that cared about the game just as much as i did i'm they better announce something soon. I kind of hope it's a Sunday. Dude, that would be the <laughs> I best, wanna, I wanna that would be that. the best birthday gift ever. I'm not gonna lie. That would be happy early birthday. Thank you. I appreciate that. 25, baby. I'm getting old now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. oh man. Uh, uh, but <laughs> sorry, not to diss on you, Tavi. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, but like, it's crazy now. It's just uh, that would be an awesome thing. If they really did that i doubt it and i'm yeah. definitely not gonna you know be like yo if this doesn't happen my birthday's ruined but <laughs> it'd be like bro this is so sick i'm so glad they did this yeah for sure so and i'm curious to know when they would do it because like i mean unless it's christmas time or something like that then i don't know when it would be uh, yeah i don't know what other event they could do it on to be quite honest so um mm -hmm. i don't know are there any gaming events coming up like uh oh uh vgas when are the vgas I don't know, actually. I have no idea. December 9th. Mm. Okay. I, I think December 9th might be a good place to do it. Like, where else would you... I, outside of the... If it, it's not going to be this, this Either Sunday, that or just a separate announcement entirely. Game Awards yeah. would be a good idea, though. Um, yeah. I just they have the money to be able to do it. Yeah, I think it's possible because a lot of people do stuff like then. I remember the last topic that I want to hit on before we head out, but yeah, absolutely. I, like just try to visualize what a riot. This definitely felt like a Tom Cannon, Tony Tom Cannon kind of like community video. The last two ones, mm -hmm. but imagine an actual trailer for this game, like right. a cinematic trailer for whatever project else can be called. Yeah. Honestly, like if, if we're going to look at other riot or league of legends based trailers, if we look at the legends of Runeterra trailers, right this is a game that literally is a card game use brief yes please show this one this is this is a trailer for a literal card game okay like this has sick ass music this this has a really really cool fucking art style and like super cool cinematic like moments for it and it's for a card game it's for a card game bro like you're this shit doesn't happen it's just to show off like yo look at this cool ass fucking game we're doing man like yeah. get fucking hyped and you're like dude i'm hyped i'm fucking hyped dude. i want to play as darius i want to play as zed 
Like this look at the so League of cool. Legends and RL like the the world's tournament, like the world's animations. Yeah, this is for like, yeah, and that's for literally for competitions. Like it doesn't. There's nothing changing in the game. <laughs> It's yeah, but this is gonna be like the first time where it's more accurate to be like they're scrapping it back and forth like one on one or two on two, and it'll actually be more more accurate to what's happening on like the cutscenes and stuff because they're gonna you're gonna be able to control more of the character in my opinion. So like right. you know I know Darius is gonna have his Q and all that sort of stuff like that's gonna be a part of his mechanic, but like he's gonna have way more moves than just four. Right. Uh, he's so gonna have gonna an be... ult, bro. He's gonna have a super. Yeah, you can recreate some of these crazy cutscenes that we've watched over the years with like worlds and, and, and uh, like arcane or whatever. Yeah, you're gonna, it's gonna be, be pretty able nuts. To do, it's gonna be pretty nuts. You're gonna be able to do more stuff for the character, like for the characters that you really enjoy that you can't do in League. Like, yeah, there's a good amount that you can do with certain characters in League, but like this allows them to move and do different things that still is that character and makes you enjoy that character even more. So yeah. And like even coming from Runeterra, I really enjoyed how when they made a new champion for the game, they always made it in design of that character. Like, for example, they created Jin as a card recently, and he's literally a four mana four four. I'm not fucking lying. Like <laughs> he's a four mana four four, and he literally has all of his abilities as some something in that game. Like they they really did it, and huh. it just goes to show like if they can do it in a card game for Christ's sake, like think about it in a fighting game where you're able to as Garen like alt somebody and smite them to the ground, you know? Oh yeah, like that Crusader. shit's gonna be cool as fuck. And also on, on topic with these trailers, just this this is one trailer they did a bunch of these trailers for all the different regions that league of legends has which is a lot oh. they did one for like all of them which was like six different regions or something like that i can't i can't like it would take me a little bit to remember oh, I love that card but like yeah as of right now they're showing demacia and the shadow isles so like yeah yeah but like this is just off of one trailer but they right. they and did Boxes. other trailers so like it's just cool, right? And they'll do this, and mm -hmm. they will market the fuck out of it, and people are gonna eat this shit up. I'm gonna eat it up. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna eat this up because I ate up this trailer. I was like, "Yo, this is so sick!" Like, it I'm makes me wonder if they're gonna add any characters from Runeterra to Project L. You know what I mean? Yeah, characters honestly, that were introduced in Runeterra. So there's a very good chance of that happening because Yone was a card in Runeterra before he was a champion. Oh, um, no shit. yeah, he was a card. He was a, um, he was a card that actually supported Yasuo too, like his play style. So like just taking that into account, that is genuinely possible. There's a character actually, she showed up in this trailer, um, named Sithria, who is a Damasian like hero. You go all the way. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Go oh, this lady. Yep. That girl, that girl that's, this is Sithria and she is a very important character card and figure she has like five different cards in the game and they all have different strengths and they all have lore tidbits about her so you know her story and she eventually becomes like a huge like i think she literally her final card which is like the strongest version of her is called like sithria the hero or lady of the clouds sithria lady of the clouds and it's one of my favorite mm. cards in the game like genuinely because it's a 10 mana 10 10 like it is a literally like you play this card and that is your turn and like it eventually mm. makes her like a huge hero like army general that commands like the skies so oh. like with the so they have a large pool to pull from right like this it is genuinely possible like it but is they can introduce an original character short. to this that might come to league of legends or something like that yeah imagine i wonder if they're gonna have a story mode in this game um I, I didn't think about that until just now, but well, I, I can see it working, but I think it's something they would add later. I think they would add it later. Um, again, uh, like I know I'm quoting a lot from Runeterra, but like it is League of Legends and it's the only other League of Legends game that they've like shown off other than like Ruined King. So they did actually a huge PVE portion for the game called um, Path of Champions, where you can level up a champion 
and go through like, yeah. lore tidbits with them. And that's a full on like mode. Like people play just Path of Champions, so they don't even play the PvP, the PvP portion of the game, right? Hmm. And they didn't add that till later. It was a lab thing. Like they were testing it out, and people ate that shit up. And they're like, you know what? We're gonna put forth time into it. And they put in a lot of time and effort into it. Like it's hmm. its own like major game mode inside the game. Um, and you could you can play just that and nothing else. So knowing that, like, it's definitely possible for them to do a story mode to actually like allow you to either do it's some sort backstory. of like Street Fighter kind of arcade like or World Warrior Comic book kind style. of situation where you, they're going from one region to another to fight a final boss that's like really fucking difficult. I don't know who they could make it into, but like, like if we were, if this was around the Ruin King timeline, they could make it like, you know, they're fighting all of these people controlled by the Ruin King. And then the final boss is the Ruin King, Viego. And he's just like absolutely nuts. Like that would be cool. That'd be something like that they could They have do. a lot of opportunities for store, like individual story, like arcade mode stories. You right. Know? And I know for a fact that this game will build upon the lore of different characters they just have a history of doing that with any mm -hmm. game that is related to league like a lot of lore tidbits and info was actually either released or updated or expanded upon in the runeterra card game like zillion is an insanely different character in the card game and it makes him a very much more interesting character through the lore like hmm. it, it like makes him really cool like he's not just some this weird ass time wizard looking dude that's from league that just throws clock bombs like he's a <laughs> he's literally somebody who is trying to stop an apocalypse hitting the like actual world and trying to save a city by going back in time and trying to change the timeline and he Damn. has followers behind him and he has this huge amount of lore tidbits and people that are like apprenticed to him and it's like wow that's really fucking cool like that's really interesting i really want to know more about this and i can i know for a fact that they'll do something like that and i know ruined king did that for a lot of other characters too because that is ruined king is canon in the um league of legends like storyline and actually mm. it's really cool um anybody who's a fan um knows right now that there's actually a skin based on the game um, it's a Gangplank skin called um, Betrayer Gangplank, and that's a skin that's based on the game, and is actually like lore relevant. So I have to scoop that game up at like, some point. It genuinely possible, very very possible, in fact. And there's a lot of avenues that they can go down to do this. Like yeah, we're we're talking about it's free. They don't have to like rush and get it out because they don't feel like they're robbing people. You know right? What I mean? They they can do whatever like, that's what it whenever they Fighter. want. They could just make the game free and just make it a one v one game. Like, and you know what? It's still gonna pop off no matter what. Like it just yeah. will. And mm -hmm. like the, what we're talking about, like you know, it might not happen for a long time for the game. It might happen right when the game comes out. But no matter what, the game's gonna pop off. Like there's no doubt yeah. about it. Calling it. We're calling it here. I'm. Um, you know what? Like, I, I just. You know, I can't see a world where this game fails. I feel like um, that that debate that we had a long time ago. <laughs> I love this, like, I still I feel remember like we were that. spot on on all that stuff. Yeah, we were, man. Like, yeah, I mean, at that point in time when we like all we knew was something really small. Like, I think it was literally just them saying like, "We're making a game." Or making a fighting game and it was literally that like five it was second, like nothing it was like literally a yeah. five second clip that's all we saw that's all we knew we knew nothing about like how the game would play what's like what's the fucking model none of that and we we knew what it potentially could have been mm -hmm. and ultimately it's showing up to be exactly what we predicted it to be which is kind of crazy. Good net like, code. We yeah, great net code. We were they were arguing with us that it's not going to have rollback, and we're like, bro. Ooh. I was like, come on, Baby. are you kidding me? There's oh, no man. way. There's no way they wouldn't. It's the Cannon Brothers. They made GGPO. Why wouldn't right. they? Like that's that's criminal. That's just straight criminal. 
Yeah, why? Why, why would you bring them on? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> very doom, Ryan's very doomsday. Yeah, you know they just want to be negative. So when they're right, or if they're right, then you know they called it. But nah, <laughs> the I told sense. you, the I told you so crowd. I actually DM'd one of them afterwards, and he was like, "Well, yeah, I was wrong." <laughs> I was like, I'm no petty That's right now. So you know? funny. I I respect you for doing that because I <laughs> I don't I don't do that because I'm not an I told you so kind of person. Sometimes I am, but like it's good to know that they were like, "Yeah, bro, you got me." <laughs> yeah, they took it well. That was good. I love that. I love that. Um, All right. Yeah. Any other points you want to hit? Um, is there? Um, can we go back to the video like right where we were at? Um, just take a quick yeah, look yeah. at. Like, <laughs> how far back? Here we go. Yeah, go. I can turn the sound we back were on. more. I think we were more over. Oh, Lowey. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I don't want to touch on this too much, but if anybody is genuinely interested into the in the game, um, another thing that makes me very very hopeful for the game is their dev blog post about making a Lowey. <sighs> They genuinely go into detail about their design structure and why, like, they are making the characters they way, the way they are and what makes that character, like, it's in the comments if you check that. Oh, in uh, the comments, that's where it was. Oh, okay, that that was it. That was, or in the, um, it was right there, though. So, like, if we look at this really quick, keep scrolling down. Um, keep scrolling. Yeah, like, this art's cool. Yeah. Um, here we go. This is it. This is what I wanted to see. So they talk about like who is Alawi, what is her goal, and what is her like guardrails. And they talk about like her god Nakakuburos. Uh, I'm only gonna say that once because I'm not gonna keep saying that. Fights alongside her. It doesn't fight for her. It's a helping hand. And that is like one of the things that they made the character like for sure. Slow, but always in motion, overwhelming pressure. So they they obviously like not a puppet master, right? Like she's not ordering around her God. She can control the tentacles. However, they're independently moving on their own and they're just their own thing. And that is Alawi. That is literally Alawi's play style in League of Legends, right? Like they're trying their best to translate these characters into who they are and make them like if you are a player in league right now and you're an Alawi player if you see that she's on here and you play her you're gonna be like wow she plays just like she does like just like she plays in like top lane how that's crazy like they're they're translating mm. this like this is this is their like thought process and this is very like it's way more detailed than i thought they were going yeah. to do it and if you genuinely like are interested in any of this stuff like and you're doubtful really just read this because just from this dev blog post it tells you how much they genuinely care about the game and the actual like what the game is going to look like and perceive to other people outside of it and you can tell the love and like how much they actually genuinely want this game to like pop off. So like it, it's just hard for me to believe that this this game that has so much care and like what's the word like um um detailed like eye of detail or whatever. I'm trying to think of mm -hmm. what the the phrase is, but like fidelity. <sighs> Something, something with detail, but just how they care attention about to the, detail. What's say that again? Attention to detail. Attention to detail. Yes, that's it. Attention to detail mm. over the small things over a, a champion on league, and how they want to translate that into a fighting game format. Like it's hard to see something like this crash and burn, like genuinely. Like if you see any of this from like it, you could you would see this from a Street Fighter dev post. Like you would, yeah. And you know, Street Fighter's gonna Skull pop girls off or something like that. Like, you, yeah, yeah. Like you, you can tell. Like, and yeah, if we, if you ever, if anybody has ever watched, there's a really popular video of like the Skullgirls, uh, like 
one of the devs talking about like just animation for Skullgirls. Like, yeah, you can tell these people genuinely like put forth a lot of effort. Even the KI documentary, I highly recommend anybody to watch the KI documentary. And honestly, it's pretty relevant towards this because that is also a free to play fighting game. And they talk about that as a like main point. So, hmm. and like, like there's a whole documentary just about the music in that game. And it's a good documentary too. So like, and it gives me the same vibes that I see with this where like they care, they obviously care and they want it to be the next big thing. No doubt about it. Yeah, I think it's going to be a huge. Uh, I'm, we're going to talk about it again. Like, I want to just do regular updates. Like, whenever there's a trailer, we got to talk about <laughs> we gotta it. We got to talk about it. It's just too fun it. to not do it, for sure. Um, I guess before you head out, yeah. do um, you have anything that's going on for you or anything that you want people to check out, like a link, either for your own or something that you're trying to plug? Yeah, yeah. I, I've been streaming a lot more lately. Um, I've been upgrading my stream very slowly but surely, and I stream every now and then. I'm planning on streaming a little more now. I know that's if, <laughs> if you watch the podcast, I might be a running track record for me but genuinely um please check out my stream twitch.tv slash um i i want to stream a lot more like solo rpgs and maybe more fighting games too especially since uh dragon ball is getting rollback i feel like if i stream during that time it's going to be a really good time for everyone involved so please True check story. me out especially yep all right check them out thank you guys so much we're going to see you guys in the next one Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. I greatly appreciate it. And if you'd like to return that appreciation, if you'd had some fun with this conversation, if you like this episode or my content in general, uh, make sure you guys like this or subscribe to it, however you're watching it. Of course, leave your comments in the comments section. I'd love to interact with you. Of course, you can follow me on my social medias like Twitter. Uh, that's the easiest one to get a hold of me unless you use Discord. I think my Discord is listed as well. Uh, but either way, thank you guys so much. I appreciate the support. I have a lot of stress lifted from my chest, from my body. It feels so much better. I can't even explain the night and day change that I've had with this. But nonetheless, thank you guys so much. And I'm going to see you guys in the next episode.